Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you're at out there. It is uh, the Earthmaster here on finally uh, this Friday. It is Friday, May 19, 2023, about 11.09 a.m. here along the West Coast uh, in the state of California. 1.7 earthquake out here in the be beautiful big blue Pacific Ocean in Hawaii. 1.7 earthquake, the latest on the globe. Uh, activity out here following yesterday's large 7.7 .7 earthquake that would make that the uh, uh, second largest earthquake of the year so far around the uh, Vanuatu area triggered a uh, tsunami warning uh, speaking of that we did see some observed heights of tsunamis in the Vanuatu area roughly up to about two feet there in this region of the Vanuatu area. Looks like uh, New Zealand East Cape area has seen uh, 0.4. So just uh, under half a foot of tsunami maximum height. Uh, so these were a little bit lower than what they were forecasting, but which is good, right? We don't need no major tsunami going on out there. Either way, uh, everything's calmed down since then. No tsunami uh, warning or threat or watch or anything going on for now as uh, far as earthquake activity goes definitely seen quite a bit of aftershock movement here in this area look at this uh, coming up on see what we got 32 earthquakes and i'm sure there's a lot lot more in terms of smaller quakes uh, following this large earthquake there yesterday but uh, the usgs showing um, should be about 4.5 and above or so uh, internationally 32 of them and the um, looks like the largest aftershock so far is going to be this 5.9 uh, looks like that came up about 10 minutes following the 7.7 .7. so there's quite a few fives in there as you can see quite a few fours uh, and far as any migration goes looks like the latest quake here shows a 5.0 a little bit closer to the Port Villa area Vanuatu region uh, of course, the migration of this movement, movement typically follows the plate boundary here uh, towards the northwest. So we'll have to continue to watch this uh, area up around Solomon Islands in Papua New Guinea area uh, for some potential uh, subsequent movement going on there. All right, let's see. Uh, very quiet up here along the western Pacific. That's one thing I've noticed even on the globe here. Uh, we are awfully quiet across the Mariana Trench north into the Izu Trench and the Japan Trench here. Of course, Kuril Kamchaka Trench waiting. Uh, I believe that's one of our spots that we'll see a uh, uh, mega quake eventually. It's gotta be uh, building up by now. It's a major accumulated stress builder in that region. Slips, uh, slip rate's awfully high. Uh, we do see, looks like we're seeing a little bit of activity here across the Philippines, southern end of the Philippine Trench here in this clutter of threes. Uh, and also a slight uptick here across the Java Trench. Now this is kind of swarming a little bit. USGS, well, this is that same area, not showing anything there across the map for some reason. Uh, but there is at least one 4.0 in there. A couple 4.0s actually, and uh, so many twos and threes there in that mix. So it looks like that migration here uh, that I was just chatting about seems to be working its way up into this area. We'll keep a heads up throughout that region today. Uh, into Alaska, or the uh, Hawaii area, let's go ahead and see what's going on over here. Looks like we're lighting up slightly with earthquake activity around Kilauea Volcano and one up here on the northeastern flank of Mauna Loa, 2.1, 3.9 kilometers deep. Uh, that's well below the surface. And a uh, pretty good clutter of earthquakes here across the Pahala area. That's all very typical though for that region. Let me see what we got for the uh, hazard notification system here uh, for the HVO. Kilauea daily update not put out yet. Uh, so we'll wait for that to be put out a little bit later today. But this is from yesterday. I don't think we got anything changing yet uh, across the area as far as any eruptive status goes. All just uh, mostly smaller microquakes across the region today. Up into Alaska. Not a whole lot popping up there, just uh, some small microquakes across the typical areas uh, for the west coast here. Pacific Northwest, relatively quiet. Uh, up into Northern California, down into Northern California here, 
Got, uh, yeah, it looks like we had a couple more earthquakes here after midnight into the Lake Almanor area. This has kind of been an ongoing sequence of uh, uh, swarming, so to speak, here around the Lake Almanor area. Looks like we got about, oh, 114 earthquakes or so since this began back on uh, uh, mid-March. We're the second week of March, or uh, not March, excuse me, May. May, why did I say March? Goodness, we're not way back there, are we? Did I say March in the beginning of this update? Hopefully not. It's May 19th, 2023. Uh, I think I'm longing for some cooler weather already. All right, so we had about 112 earthquakes or so in this area since the second week of May. And uh, it's been tapering off slightly, but the largest so far looks to be a 5.5 in the mix here. Where did that go right here? Uh, with the second largest quake of 5.2. So this area is still showing some movement uh, even as of uh, this morning's date. So we we'll continue to watch that. Also a little bit of activity across the Pyramid Lake region of Nevada. Very small microquake movement here across the uh, uh, western portion there of Nevada. Um, into the rest of California here, mostly smaller microquakes uh, as far as the 2.5 and above map goes. Well, just that one earthquake up here around the Lake Almanor area and one out in Nevada near Mina. All this activity down here, all very small microquake movement. Got one earthquake here on the Garlock Fault shear zone. It's a little point eight, just outside of the Tehachapi area. Into the Yellowstone region, not a whole lot going on here, but we are gonna double check that to make sure that we got uh, all the information updated uh, there's a signature from the 7.7 yesterday that's going to be that uh, seismic wave there pretty nice looking and uh, aside from that no earthquake activity there at the Yellowstone region uh, let's see over in the New Madrid seismic zone a little 2.3 from yesterday and right after that activity in the Vanuatu area last night, we started to see a little earthquake activity up in New York. 2.2 uh, earthquake. I was reading an article, uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before, I'll have to see if I can find it again and share it, that the weight of all the buildings and whatnot around Manhattan, New York City, you know, this whole concrete jungle you can see it on satellite view uh, is basically weighing down this land uh, and it's dropping slowly but surely uh, which is not good news with all the weight and people the concrete the buildings the steel all that is adding stress and strain out here so I find it kind of odd that we see a little bit of earthquake activity now taking place within this region right after reading this article so I'll, I'll see if I can pull that up um, or you could do a quick Google search on it uh, and probably find it as well. But I'll I'll share it here on the social media platforms uh, after this video, or I'll actually include it here as a link. But yeah, that's uh, a little crazy. A little 2.2, 10 kilometers deep there, just off the uh, off the Hudson area. It looks like. All right, uh, let's see what else we have here across the region. Not a whole lot further south. The Caribbean plate shows very small microquake activity. Uh, look here at the EMSC model as well. Shows slight uptick here along the Middle America Trench. Of course, we did see uh, um, some uh, fours here over the last 24 hours, it looks like, up and down this area. South America, relatively quiet, although we did have that... Uh, well, it looks like a little bit of deeper activity movement taking place there uh, into the Peru Chile Trench regions. Atlantic Ocean very quiet now. Uh, far as the rest of the world goes, very minimal activity across the Mediterranean and Turkey area. Still seeing some movement down here off of the plate boundary. I'm sure USGS is reporting this uh, down into the Gulf of Aden area south of Yemen here along this fracture zone uh, kind of like a zipper of different uh, boundaries but this is uh, let's go over here to the uh, map here and check out this region basically this is a 
can kind of see the zipper pattern right in here where the uh, the plates here are kind of spreading apart. It's a divergent boundary. And that's been showing quite a bit of activity here uh, recently. Uh, the USGS reporting a 5.7 and a 4.5 in this area, but I know we've had more over the last seven days, more than that. I'm pretty certain here. Let's see what the EMSC is reporting <clears throat> in this area. Well, they're showing a, a handful of quakes here from the last 24 hours, roughly about the same as the USGS was, but uh, just where we had a little bit more activity here in this region. Uh, either way, that's uh, slightly elevated uh, for earthquake activity currently taking place there. All right, uh, let's see. The rest of the world looks fairly quiet uh, across Russia and China. Again, watching this swarm of activity here, all this movement across the Java Trench and the New Guinea area. All showing signs of elevated uptick following the momentum there from yesterday's 7.7 .7 earthquake into um, into the Vanuatu area. Doesn't look like we've seen any adjustment upstream. A little small microquake activity it looks like down in New Zealand. Uh, let's see what we have here for the GeoNet servers. Uh, a couple twos looks like coming in. I'm not seeing anything major. I was looking for that three. There's that 3.3, 3. 185 kilometers into the Kermadec Trench. That's going to be this little speck of an earthquake here. Nothing big, um, but really haven't seen any adjustment going on down here across New Zealand. All that activity there from last night, the 7.7 .7 showing up. Again, even on these seismograph stations fairly nicely. All right, uh, let's go ahead and jump into space weather activity. This is getting popping like crazy with a bunch of sea flares. Yesterday, we had a, a bunch of M flares popping up here, quite a few of them, uh, over the last couple days or so. And it uh, looks like we're toning down slightly into the upper sea flare category there listed on the chart. This is all coming from a couple different regional sunspots here. Now turning into a better perspective view here for us on Earth and uh, getting a little bit better look at the dynamics. I still think um, both of these harbor some potential for some strong flaring. Uh, even this sunspot region here that's been facing us for many days is now starting to turn away from Earth. Uh, but even this is starting to grow and get more complex. Uh, so we'll watch this for some further flaring. But I think the main regional sunspot is going to be this one up here to watch for the most activity and the potential for an X flare. Uh, that's 3311, 3310, and a newly assigned sunspot region is trailing that 3310 back here. Uh, that also looks fairly complex as well. So we'll watch this in the coming days uh, for some stronger flaring. 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 55, elevated 15% chance for an X flare. And the SFI is increasing the solar flux index. The energy, so to speak, uh, is rising up to about 151. Uh, let's see here. No major coronal holes facing us. Doesn't look like we've seen any major CMEs. That's why the uh, current KP index and to come here uh, is very minimal. Not a whole lot of potential, unfortunately, for any auroras. But we'll definitely continue to watch that in hopes. Fingers crossed here, folks, as we head into uh, early next week, potentially, or maybe even this weekend here, late weekend, early next week, we'll get these into a little bit better perspective and uh, maybe the blast off a CME or two in the Earth directed view. That would be good for uh, the sky watchers. It gets kind of boring, right? Uh, not being able to look up in the sky and see some auroras. All right, uh, let's see. I think that's about it, folks. The weather today most of the severe threat is down into texas it looks like they've made a little adjustment to this from last night shifted it a little bit more to the west uh, only a two percent tornado risk there across southeastern oklahoma northeastern texas and a good portion of western arkansas there in a two percent risk 
most of the threat today. It looks like it's going to be some large damaging hail across the Texas area. Uh, there in the dotted dashed line area includes Midland, San Angelo, Coppers Cove, Big Spring, and Carryville, Texas area. All looking at a 10% or greater probability of 2 inch diameter hail or larger uh, within 25 miles of a point. So just heads up there for that main weather threat across uh, a portion of Texas today. All right, folks, have a good one. We will catch you guys back out here a little bit later tonight, uh, unless something major happens. Seems like I jinxed that yesterday uh, with that big one coming in. Take care, folks. I got a lot of yard work to do today, so I'm going to try to get some of these bull thistles down uh, before they grow 10 feet tall. I mean, they're they're literally at least eight and a half feet tall right now into some portions of my backfield so i got to get these down we'll catch you guys back here a little bit later tonight have a good one everyone